All right, everyone. Welcome to episode one of the Midnight High podcast. Woohoo! We are, yeah, <laughs> we're doing a podcast now because, you know, before we were doing that hot takes thing. For those who don't know, we sat down, played Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, and just talked about our hot topics. Those are hot takes on society. Those are good times. I remember the, the thing is they were fun to make, but listening back on them they were very boring. Yeah. We we made a lot of mistakes in our early video, so we apologize for that. I apologize in advance for how bad this one will be. All right, so first we should start off with our drinks of choice. What you been drinking? (laughs) Um, Okay, so I want to tell a story. Um, So I work at um, like a a local grocery store at Festival Foods, um, and I I was working in back. Like I know somebody had like G Fuel, and I'm like, wait, we don't have G Fuel in like the yeah, like the. like the the, the 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 front like uh, we don't have G fuel on the shelf but i see them in the back stock i'm like what the heck well why do we have this here and so i like you know weeks go by and i'm like it's still here and then suddenly when i'm like ch- uh, like when i clock out i notice um i i notice that i notice the g fuel in like the top right corner of the refrigerator and where, like that holds the sauce and stuff i'm like Oh my gosh we have g fuel here and so i like to just like grab like the first two cans i find with like sonic and crash bandicoot and i just check out with them and for context we have never had g fuel because nowhere around our area really sells them and i'm not gonna pay for shipping on a product <laughs> i've never had uh so i chose the wampa fruit crash bandicoot for limited edition yeah, and I, I chose the um peach the Sonic the Hedgehog peach rings. So let's try these. Just tastes like weird grape. <laughs> That's the best I can describe it. Mine tastes like watered down peaches. <laughs> like you don't like, I mean I guess the peach flavor's there, but I mean it's it's a bit more subtle, and I I, I prefer that I think because like. Lots of other energy drinks. I'm going way too close to the mic. Lots of other energy drinks, like, are just some, um, like, they just taste like candy like. Like, Monster just tastes like Jolly Ranchers, and, like, Bang is just. Bang and Rain are just, like, pure candy, the cancer, and it's just. Ugh, it's so gross. I hate it. It was always had this at the school store, so that's what I'm gonna deal with. So, this part of the first episode, I will introduce. Our normal intro segment. This, um, I'm blanking on what we're gonna call it. We're gonna call it. Okay, I'm gonna have to look. Oh, <laughs> Why did we already forget what we're gonna Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're gonna call it Best of the Month, where we look back on the previous month and, you know, just say what the, the best things we watched, played, listen, listened to. Yeah, listened to observed touch smell touch, I don't know. yeah I mean, really anything it's mostly entertainment focused yeah so uh, media, well, whatever yeah you, 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 you can start us off I'll right start. now um uh last month was october yeah, so it's the i month. played um a very nostalgic game scooby-doo night of 100 frights and i i got pretty far and i beat the game and 100 percented one of the areas and uh, that game is pretty fun pretty underrated I mean, people talk about like out for bikini bottom or like oh, yeah, waffle versus capcom 2 or whatever that yeah one is. they always like, this is a like, good license yeah right like here. this one you can tell they liked the source material it was run by um what's it called Happy Iron uh, Studios, Studios, yeah they're published by thq uh before they became THQ Nordic the I don't know they do some things I know my I think my favorite part about that game is that um if you collect like all the Scooby snacks in area you like can unlock like how the developers made the game itself and like 
they first start you out with like the sketchboarding and then they move over to like 3d design and it like as a kid that totally like yeah as a kid it totally was just like super cool it's like wow this is how they made video games and just like it motivated me to try to like um you know 100 percent the game because i wanted to know how they you know made the stupid scooby-doo game um <laughs> But yeah, yeah. That, that it has a like a lot of good um like references and uh you know from the show um lots of you know fan service. Has, I don't know which voice cast, but it has one of them. Uh, or really good impersonators. Yeah, really, yeah. Because um, I can't really tell the difference. I mean, and they're all like super like low quality like voices. They, they made them very low quality. I'm pretty sure they intentionally did that. They even completely redid the intro from the classic show in, like, the 3D models. Yeah, I call that lazy, but I think it's pretty cool. <laughs> well, they could have just copy and pasted the original Yeah, they could have, but no, they... I mean, the song's the same, and it's, like... It's all, like, compressed. Or and... 60s, like... Yeah. Well, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. See, the show was 60s, I think, was... I think. Anyway. Anyway, yeah, we're not... What? Um, and then I should also mention that I started... And not last month, this month, I finished it, but I have played through Mother. Yes. Or, or to well, all, all the regular Americans out there, Earthbound Beginnings. But I did not play that version. I played the fan translation with the Easy Ring on, because if you don't have the Easy Ring on, that game sucks. But I greatly enjoyed it. Um, I'm blanking on... I, I put it in my top ten, actually. Yeah, we will look that up. Let me I, check... That um, that whole series is like top three for me of all time. Favorite uh, games. It is number eight. That's um, pretty good. Above Assassin's Creed Four and underneath Metal Gear Solid One, which is another game that I played very recently. But oh well, no, that was, recently it was like a few months ago. That's well, like, very recently. I guess so. Yeah. To me. <laughs> so yeah, Mother is amazing. Uh, do not play here. Do do not Nintendo. play Earth on buy the Wii U. It, buy it so yeah. Nintendo knows that Mother is good, but don't play it. Just get the fan translation. You can buy a reproduction cart. You can use a flash cart. You can use an emulator like I did. I played it in a very sketchy way on my Wii through um, onto a CRT. But since it's a Game Boy game, it doesn't scale correctly to the CRT, so it's shrunken down a little bit with an SNES controller. So it wasn't very authentic, but I will fix that when playing Earthbound. I just used my phone when I played it in school. It was actually last. Lame. I played it last year um, during the pandemic, like when they, um, when like the schools opened up again, and like they gave you like practically no homework and crap. So uh, I just like I just played through the entire month because like I think they opened it up in the second semester or later in the second semester. So like. I breeze through the three games like just in like three four months because I was just so hooked on them. Um, but yeah, yeah so the, what, like the, what? Uh, I don't mean don't mean to interrupt. But what did you do? Oh um well wait 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 wait. So you started out with um games right yeah. Oh right I should mention I'm also playing Twilight Princess. Yeah, that's what we're doing right now, and um, yeah, you can talk about that some other time because that's Cause a. I haven't oof. finished it yet, and it's a story, all right. And not really. <laughs> There's no story. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, there oh, is. No, you mean my story with it? Right. That's what I was saying. Right. Yeah. The game story. has a story. It does have a story. You're right. Um, but for me, video games, I played. Um, I I don't think I played. You know, yeah, from a play from August, from October was the Devil May Cry 2016 reboot. Um, no, 2016. Was it 2016? Wait, when was it? Like 2006? 2010? Uh, oh right, oh, right. Because I keep thinking that I keep thinking it came out on, on the PS4. Sure that's when the fifth game. Came right, out. right. I I keep and I keep forgetting it's on the PS3 because I've only played Devil May Cry's games on the PS2 and then just on the PS4. Yeah, skip um, the whole. Yeah, I I hit the I had skipped the whole generation, which is actually really like, nice. Hey, let's do a special edition remake. Right, God bless him on that. Because oh my gosh, I never would have played that game on stupid 720p and 30 fps. Um, Excuse me. The, the, you see, 
they did a lot of things right but as everyone else has said they completely ruined dante like not only is his character just bad but oh my gosh his voice actor just genuinely didn't give a guard like he, he gave no he gave nothing in that performance like absolutely nothing he just showed up for Except one for day one scene at the ending the, like that's barely <laughs> that's like something really, and plus it was the um writing that's what made that scene better not really well, the, the writing was good i thought it was more the delivery that just felt flat and made the writing seem bad yeah like they did, they did like, I love, like, the world that they put you in, just, like, this, 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 like, they put you in, like, this city and, like, overrun by, like, a demon capitalist and crap, and it's just, like, gotta take them down to free, free the citizens, and you're, like, you're doing a whole bunch of stuff to, like, you know, try to, like, free the area and all that. It, it's super, not super fun, but, like, it, it, it's kind of, like, you it know. It's almost it, a good game from what I gather. Yeah, and, like, but if you throw away like the fact that is Dante and all the other characters from the other games, like if they, if you had like fresh new characters and all that, and just took Devil May Cry out of it, I think you could have had like a competent game. Uh, Cause like yeah, like the combat felt weird, but you you eventually got used to it. I th I thought, um, and then yeah, the like setting was good. Um, it, I wasn't like a, like I wasn't like I was, sometimes I was having fun, but I wasn't like I can't wait to turn this off, you know. Um, so um. Anything? What else have you done? Um, I mean, I watched Dune. We we watched Dune. That's a. That is something we will discuss in a later. I guess episode. so. Yeah. I mean, I had nothing to say about it. <laughs> I I'm just like it's a movie. A uh, well, good, like a good I mean, movie, but it'd be some, I think it's something that bouncing off each other we could still talk about. Anyway, I guess so. um, yeah, I don't know any. Yeah, either. Dune. Oh, October thirty first. Literally, the last thing we did was we both watched a Nightmare on Elm Street for the very. first Oh my time. gosh, that is such a fantastic film. I I can't believe I missed out on it. Like yeah, it's been like okay. I will say like if I would have watched it like well, any younger, I would have like crowd my pants yeah because i got unnerved by the harry potter 2 slug puking i saw that oh um, my in quotes too young <laughs> yeah and i was just like ew he's puking slug so like and i got freaked out by the stupidest thing so yeah i'm glad i, but I freaked, out, freaked out about fluffy for crying out loud like he scared the crap out of oh, me from Harry Potter. Yeah, scene. yeah. He's, the first one. Um, he is kind of threatening, and then you play the Lego version, and he's just like kind of cute. Yeah. Um. I. Uh, but yeah, like everything about like that just proves, I think, that you don't need CGI to make a movie scary. Like they had um like a special like not special, but like, they had like um effects that you could like if you look close you could see that's obviously fake like um like, like for example the ending scene where um freddy like um where they're in like they're oh, going yeah. to the car and like freddy, freddy pulls, pulls, pulls a mom through the window <laughs> and like you could fun. clearly tell it's a doll yeah or it was so fun or like I when like um song. what's his name hate like it gets hanged by the um <laughs> by that the was, bed sheets okay, that was this i love that super charming like it's so obvious it's a like practical effect, yeah i prefer it's it out of the time i'd rather right. um apparently the the bro who showed it to us says that in the remake they do do cgi <laughs> i said do do <laughs> yeah funny Man, I didn't even you. <laughs> <laughs> and um he couldn't find the clip though uh, we don't want to see it. But, yeah, um, that that just seems awful. I'd, yeah. I'd I'd rather have crappy special effect, like eighties special effects, than um, like like one thing, like um, like a, in one scene, one of the kids gets like dragged in the bed, and then just all this blood just spurts <laughs> out, like a whole crowd, like gallons of blood just splurts out of the bed, and I'm, I'm like, how do they do that? And one of our friends are just like, he um. They, I think they, what he said, like they turned the room he said like that they, upside the room down. Was upside down. Yeah, and Kinda like like that one in Luigi's Mansion. <laughs> yeah, and, and like to me, it was like if this was recorded today, they just would CGI the blood. Yeah, it would have been all like goopy and. Shiny. Yeah, and it was wouldn't have looked as good. Like I. Now I really want to see the remake. Oh my gosh, I don't like. But yeah, we. 
yeah, we never really grew up with horror. Like the scariest movie I saw was Monster House. Mon Mon Monster House. Jeez. Um, and like, yeah, games I played. It was the Scooby Doo game and Luigi's Mansion. That yeah. was my horror. And then suddenly, one day in class, um, it was the sci-fi fantasy horror class, which is a class where you just talk about those genres. <laughs> and just before the pandemic, we ended up the horror genre. And she's just like, all right, now I'm going to show you my favorite horror movie. And we watched The Descent. I'm just like, oh, so this horror is good. Yeah, this is what <laughs> real horror looks like. This is what actual scary and like, thing. I got are. that. Like, the, the Descent, like, had me on edge, but it didn't, like, freak me yeah, out, it, you know? It was good enough. It was a good segue, I think. A good, or not, gateway. Yeah, but, um, you, like, not even that, and I was like, just, just prove what real horror was. Like, like, oh my god, just, like, Freddy himself was, is so, like, terrifying. I like, think it's, oh man, I was, I don't know what, I don't know if I was unsettled or nervous or what I was, but, like, I was just kind of, like, I mean, I was on the edge of my seat because I'm, like, laying down, mm -hmm. but the equivalent, I was kind of, like, leaning up. Yeah. I just kept, like, look, I was, I wasn't. Normally, when I'm watching a movie, even if I'm interested in it, I'm, like, kind of looking around a little bit just to, like, get my eyes some, like, mm -hmm. differences or variety. Yeah. Or, like, I'll look at the time and be like, oh, we've been, yeah, like, two hours in or whatever, an hour in. Right. But with this one, I'm just, after this one scene, like, 20 minutes in, that mm -hmm. I won't spoil because it's too good. Yeah. Um, suddenly, I'm just staring at the screen the whole time. And I realized, like, I'd only look away to look at other people reacting to certain things. Yeah. Like, oh, my gosh. Okay, when uh, they, like, after, like, they're at, like once the final shot happens, a few seconds later, you hear, like, footsteps. Like, like dun, 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 dun. And, like... Like, I mean, like, I knew it was fake, but if like, if that was, like, in the theaters or, like, you're oh watching on like, VHS with people and, like, that VHS happens, in like... in your room, like, all the lights All off. the lights off. Oh, my... God. I, like, if you listen to the stereo <laughs> headphones, I literally would have, like, threw them down and, like, turned my head. That was, like... Like, blew my mind. Like, you could easily prank people with that, with, like, that effect. And, like... Gosh, that is... That is so good. Because, like, when you're done with the movie, like, you're, like... You've seen everything. You're you're so invested. Your eyes are glued to the screen. So when you hear those voices, you're like, like you just get that one second. It's like he's real and he's coming for me. <laughs> Some of those memes is like get real. Yeah, get real and like. Right. Oh yeah, no, you, you, we can, we can just move on. But I just I just want to say like that was amazing. That was an amazing film. I can't wait to watch like the other like big it Halloween also helped movies. That most of the times when you watch a movie or play a game or listen to an album that everyone talks about being this really good movie like you have to watch Nightmare on Elm Street and one that's especially a horror franchise that spawns 80 billion sequels <laughs> the 11th movie just came out <laughs> of Halloween I should say um, yeah. you go in with lower expectations so that could have but I, I don't I try not let that affect me Mm -hmm. uh, in this case, it didn't. Cause in this case, I wasn't thinking of the reputation while watching it. Sometimes I will. And when I do then, I think I just get a bias. Anyway, yes. So, that's uh, pretty much it. I mean, I, mean, I did watch... the music side. But yeah, I a, listened to me, a whole That's lot. a lot. Yeah. I listen to probably an album, a new album per day almost. Yeah. So, but highlights, or I guess lowlights, I'm... A lot of people know about The Clash. I listened to their fourth album, which is the tr uh, triple LP, 35 songs long. I got four songs in, and I stopped. <laughs> like, the the other two I listened to, um, the two before that one, were good. This one was not. Um, other than that, David Lee Roth is still David Lee Roth. I'm getting into him, his solo stuff. He's moving away from the, I'm just going to do Van Halen again, which is good. Mm -hmm. Adding in a bit more of the jazz that oh, his debut good, yeah. EP had. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's all I can think of at the top of my head. Um, I mean, not for oh, music. Oh, yeah, Daft Punk. I like them now. <laughs> cool. That's actually pretty cool. Um, for me, I didn't never told you about this, but in our uh, ELA class, we... 
for Halloween we watched Edward Scissorhands with uh, Johnny Depp. And um <laughs> you watch it, that? It, it's like a have you watched it? No. It's like a spoof on like horror. Like I don't I think, even I, know, I, I, I don't even know what that is to be honest. I, it's like a kind of like a spoof of like I think it's actually a spoof on that on, on Elm Street with like Johnny Depp and like his hands were literally made out of scissors. Well, and I not guess like claws. Johnny Depp was in that movie. Right. Um but like it's a very strange film because like um like the, the 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 movie takes place in the suburbs, but like all the houses are exactly the same, and they're all like in these different colors. Like there's like plain pink, then blue, then green, and like everyone just like does the usual like suburb stuff. But like the film also takes place out of the, the suburbs, and like in like um like uh, recording studios and like TVs like TV studios and all that. So just like. I was always just wondering the whole time, like, where are we? Like, are we in America? Or just some round place in America? Like, it, it's never Pacific. And then through the, in the middle of these, like, or like not in the middle, like in the edge of these like uh, suburban houses, like you just had this creepy castle that this inventor was in. And he was just making this human that had scissors for hands. And it, it, it's Very a effective. Yeah, I mean, like he could like trim like bushes really well. Like well, I'd imagine. Yeah, like, and like how do you pick things up? Right, like that's a whole like you know funny thing. Like haha, he can't pick things up, and when he does, he like just scratches the wall and stuff. But like it gets interesting at the end because like he um like try to like save um like this kid like because like somebody had, like kind of like adopts him like quote unquote adopts him even though he's like. 20 something he was like all alone and so they, like the woman was like i'll raise you with my family with you know freaking scissor scissors as hands just like and like you know like he's growing on the townsfolk but he like is like um framed for doing like these certain crimes and then like he says um like um like the kid who's he's living with like the mom's you know kid like he saves him from like a moving bus or a car and and, like, he's trying to, like, you know, like, you know, like, how you use your hands, like, make sure, like, you know, they're okay. But he's using his, like, scissors, and so he's, like, scratching him up, and, like, and, like, all the time people are seeing this, and they're like, what are you doing to this kid? You're hurting him. And, like, of course, he's, like, he's, like, he's, like a good guy. Like, he means no harm, but, like. He just misunderstood. And, like, when he, like, tries to, wait, like, swing his hands away, like, he accidentally scratches someone else, and, like. That sounds stupid. Yeah, well. <laughs> it it's, sounds like some YouTube parody. Yeah, it's like a spoof on like you know like horror stuff, but like I mean, if you got nothing else to watch on Halloween, it's not too bad. Like I don't know, it was just a weird film that we watched, and honestly, knowing my teacher, I'm not surprised we watched it. She's a bit cuckoo. She she wanted to marry Bruno Mars. Three days later, she got engaged. <laughs> so um, that was yeah, that's a, that's a teacher who showed that movie, but um, yeah, very interesting. Right. Um, yeah, and so I think that ends that section. Yeah, so now on to the main topic. Um, uh, what weird stuff we have. We have uh, a, a good pile of stuff. We might not get a decent collection of, in your case, video games and my movie. Or in my... <laughs> I think <laughs> the drink's getting to me already. In my case, I have games, some music, and some movies. Hmm. Um, so. Uh, looking at it, I have a little bit bigger pile. Yeah, you do, but like... I'll get the... I think I'll get the movies out of the way. Okay. So, basically what this, what we're gonna do, uh, is we went through a collection, selected weird, rare, and otherwise interesting things to talk about. Um, most, I don't think any of them really need to be shown physically we can just talk about them but like some weird movies i have like this one the skateboard kid uh john tron did a video on this and you found the dvd in a store around here so i bought it and it is a movie it's a movie it has a talking <laughs> skateboard in Dom it de Luis as yeah rip I don't know. I know he did some things that I know him for. I just he's can't. one of those actors where I know his name, but I don't know his face. But You're right. This one was a fun watch. The DVD is super sketchy. Looks like a bootleg. Next up is Lover. 
the Ralph the Movie Maker film. Uh, he's a YouTuber, for those who don't know. He is a film critic. He dissects movies and sometimes actors. In the yeah. Case of his chronicles with Steven Seagal, watching all of his B-grade action movies. But the thing with Ralph is he is super condescending. He thinks he is the bee's knees, as they say. And he made a movie, and we watched that movie, and it was okay. Uh, it was very okay. Like, kind of confusing. Uh, not man, not much motivation. So I, I like it. I got the Blu-ray. Because I'm just like, ooh, I'm going to support a YouTuber. And... It's just in my collection now. I don't think I'm gonna watch it again. The, the, his next movie's a lot better. Um, well, it was a short film anthology. The yeah, three short film. It, it was a lot better. I next think. is an interesting or it's, it's just stupid. I bought Dire of Wimpy Kid Roderick Rules at a thrift store and they didn't give me the DVD. I'm angry. <laughs> okay, next is The Big Cat. The Big Cat. This is a random. <laughs> <laughs> this is something we found. I looked at the cover. And I'm just like, I need this in my life. This looks like the stupidest, dumbest, oldest movie ever. And it was, it's the oldest movie I've ever seen. Um, it was filmed in 1933. Uh, <laughs> it was released like 10 years later or something stupid, ridiculous like that. Like 49, I think. Um, but yeah, the standout scene in this movie is, this is before like, animal safety laws so i think they legitimately just take a dog and a mountain lion and just throw them in a room together yeah and it's, fight it looks like that it's it, no faked at all i don't know how you'd fake that especially in the 30s like that yeah. would have been hard to fake and then next in the movie lineup is alita battle angel uh the movie's okay but i got this 4k set because it also comes with a 3d blu-ray like this movie released two years ago 2019 yeah still came with the 3d and blu-ray like who who no one, no. <laughs> everyone but me doesn't like three. Right. I'm the only one who well, likes Well, I don't them. like them because in the middle of the movie, my, my glasses keep turning off and I don't notice That's anything. What's like? Oh my gosh. Okay, I just finished my game fuel. Oh yeah, real quick. Um, I was supposed to start out with this guy. <laughs> this is unrelated to anything else. It's just something really weird. I think I have the first edition Lego Iron Man figure. Um, I bought him for five bucks <laughs> at a Pennsylvanian Pennsylvanian um, uh, antique mall thing. He the person had put his um, torso on backwards and called him a custom figure. I I was just like, oh, that looks like old Iron Man. So I bought him. Found out they had reversed the torso, so I put the arms back to normal. And I, he looks like first edition Iron Man. I have no idea if he is or not. I don't know if it's like a first out. edition. I, it was just a one that was handed out at a Comic Con or whatever yeah, or back in 2012. It could be a lot of money. It could not be. I don't care. It's just really funny it is. that I got it for five dollars. Anyway, I think can I do my handful of stuff? Uh, yeah, you can do a couple. Then I, I have. A I lot mean, you have a lot. Yeah. Uh, okay. So. I want to hog the whole show. I don't know what I should do. I don't know if I can do that one last. Um, okay, so I got a few things. So first of all, I have this um, uh, Mr. Saturn plushie that I got for my birthday from the uh, Earth Me. from yeah the Earthbound series. Yeah, and like uh, you say that it was like actually like pretty expensive just for $40. this like it, it's like this the size like the the size of my palm. Three inches, I think, three to five inches around. Yeah, and angles. Yeah, yeah he, that thing was forty bucks. Okay, so I was gonna say it was like fifty something. Forty bucks for this little guy and um I mean he's just you know nice. I don't know I about mean, it. It's new. Yeah, I mean it I, I like him. On. It came yeah. in the packaging. Oops. Okay. But yeah. But yeah, I think it's one of my more interesting stuff in my collection because like I will, I want more mother slash first bound. <laughs> um really said it in America. I know but That's why everything's so expensive. But I want like, you know, more like plushes and figures and like actual like merchandising games and all from that series because like i don't know just really like the art style and everything up next is um 
I think you own it. Don't you own Enter the Matrix on Xbox? Yes. You own that. Okay. I don't know why I picked that for yours, but... Yeah, I don't know. I just spot I mean, like I have, like, kind of nothing. Anyone who views our YouTube channel knows... They know mean. about Enter the Matrix. The well, reason why... Enter the Matrix is a game. Yeah, the reason why I picked this was because, like, A, it runs at... It's from the... Uh, we have the Xbox version. It runs at 1080i. 60 frames per second. 60 frames per second. I mean, everything looks like plastic right but like to run that good back but. then most games were like at you know 40p at the highest maybe rare frames rarely you will like, get 720. It's weird. it's weird to think that halo one like drops frames constantly yeah and that's that a, game that shovelware almost yeah the runs and the, beautifully like it looks so i mean good. okay wait it was written and directed by the wasowski brothers Wachowski? What 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 Chowski brothers or whatever, and um like it's literally like part of the actual story, and they even like were, like canonical. filmed yeah, and they filmed like exclusive cutscenes with like the original cast and everything. Those are not intended. Yeah. <laughs> Though they're definitely Those not are intended. Compressed yeah, but like it's just like if you're a fan of the Matrix, definitely pick this up. Like. You you get to learn about like a lot more lore stuff and all that, so it's a pretty. Like, it's not. Or watch like a. Story. Not, I wouldn't say a walkthrough because there's a lot of boring gameplay. Yeah, there is boring but like, gameplay, but just, just like the cutscenes, maybe because the in-game dialogue from Iron don't doesn't really matter. Yeah. But the thing with that is, um, we have like three hours of unreleased footage for that. Yeah, we didn't get it was. That. It just got super boring. Like it we, did. we weren't entertaining. <laughs> and um, I and uh, one other thing, I have a Halo Five Master Chief figure with the cloak. I have them sealed in this box here, like I have like 15 bucks. Uh, reason why I got this is just a reminder of what Halo 5 could have been. Because, like, this, they released oh, this so figure. <laughs> they released this figure. Um, they released this figure, like, um, when the trailer came out where Master Chief was in the cloak back when they, excuse me, back when they had that original plan for Halo 5 until they, like, they, they completely changed it. Then the. They hired the Batman right. Whatever he was. I don't know. He got fired after that, thank I, goodness. Um <laughs> Yeah, so like this is I just keep this as a reminder that Halo 5 could have been something good. And plus you just have this head just kinda like poking out there. Like his cloak like is so snuggie. Yeah, his cloak is so over massive that like um it's just so funny to look at. So I'm gonna keep him keep him sealed there for a long time. So yeah, that's just a handful I stuck. That handful stuff I got. So, what's we up can to move you? On to CDs. So, we will eventually make a dedicated favorite bands episode. But for now, I just want to say Downplay is in my top three. Um, there's some indie band from Ohio. One of the two good things to come out of that state. The other thing is Scott the Waz. Uh, <laughs> and that's subjective. <laughs> Very. Um, they being indie in the early or mid 2000s not many people bought their cds they were limited um this was released on the singers the singer has an indie label that he owns um if you know the band star set you know the singer i'm blanking on his name dustin bates uh hmm. star set sucks by the way <laughs> Gotta get that okay. There. Okay. Yeah. Um, this cost me fifty dollars from a Goodwill in Minnesota. Normally, when it goes uh, from like private collectors or like actual stores for profit, it's for like one hundred fifty. So that's why I'm very proud to own this. I don't own any of the other CDs because one of them went up once, but it was sealed, and oh. I was like, I do not want to open this. Yeah. And um, the second page of the insert is signed too. Oh, but you I didn't know that. Yeah, so it's this one says hi Rocky, see you again soon. What? It's um a little smudge. Becky, it's smudge. So it's oh, like, I don't. Frick. I can't read that. I can't read that. Becky, you rock with love. And then the signature that I can't read. So okay, Becky so who gave this yeah. to a goodwill or their parent. Becky, if you're out there, thank you. Uh, thanks for the donation. <laughs> and then I have. Two CDs of the Red vs. Blue soundtrack. Another more indie release, Rooster Teeth's own label. Um, but another 
separate discussion yeah. to be how perfect Red vs. Blue is. It is my favorite show, and that includes TV okay. and web. I, I want to mention a small story. Um, I was listening with my Saudi Hall group, and uh, one of the guys, he, he, like, he just randomly showed up one day. He was, like, friends of, like, my other friend who sits there, and he just suddenly showed up, like... And he was just like talking to him, and he was just like, because like he wanted to know like what um like he's like what makes a good show, and he was like, show has to have like good writing and like he just said he's like I don't have like shows that are, like, you know like overrated and stuff like that, and like like um like overrated shows like uh, Squid Game and like um Game of Thrones, like shows that are just so talked about that like they 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 just been talked about to death pretty much. Um, and so I was just like, and I, I watched the show for Reference of Blues and Machinima, and it's like, it's literally like my favorite show of all time. He's just like, that movie has sucky writing. <laughs> I just started at him, just like, dude, you don't know. <laughs> you don't know anything. And like, it sucks, because like, the first few seasons of it, it's just like, yeah, it, it's slow, but in like season five, your mind just blown. You're just like, oh, it's so good. So it's like, this is illegal. This should, this is a TV show. Like primetime television type plot, but no, it's free on the internet. Yeah, but anyway, we'll talk um, about that another day. So I have the season 10 and 12 soundtracks. When these pop up, they're like varying. Usually I see 10, that's hence the most common. That one goes up for about 120. Usually, I don't know if it, how much it sells for, but that's how much you see it go up for. It's pretty good, but I think. I can't remember which one. One of them got for 30, which is a steal, and the other one I got for like. I think it was like 15. Yeah. Which was also like, the most stolen thing. Yeah. Because, like um, yeah, videos. these are like. These were printed at the time the seasons came out, and then never again. They don't even release CDs anymore. Uh, I think. I think. 12 or 13 was actually the last one they put on CD. But yeah, I just like CDs, okay? CDs are cool. CDs, yeah. CDs are like the perfect format. For like, example, seriously. Like, no, they're not. Oh, uh, no, like, <laughs> I mean, for like a casual listener like me, like, you get a good quality. Uh, yeah, yeah if for the mainstream. And they're common. Yeah. Like, you, yeah, can, you, you just can get them mean. anywhere. And they're super cheap. It's like, like, like DVDs, like, you can just notice the little qualityness of them. Yeah, you're like you rather just get CDs the higher are quality. Better than most digital purchases. Uh, what I was gonna say is, um, Trocadero, the guys who did a lot of the soundtracks for season twelve, um, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. They also did the first five seasons. They're also one of my favorite bands, um, for their first three albums because they're more album than soundtrack. Mm -hmm. Anyway. That those CDs I've never seen go up, because uh, they were a 2001 indie yeah, band yeah. by a somewhat obscure web show. It didn't really blow up till like mid 2000s, right? When Halo 3 came out, right? And Halo 2 more, because that's when Bungie started promoting right you know, alongside their stuff. Anyway, that I I had to settle for like the gross MP3s that you buy mm -hmm. digitally. But any version of that helps. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's so good. It's so good. Yeah. Just a um, little side rant on formats. So. Another thing we can spend an episode talking about. So I got um, Bakugan Battle Brawlers for the Nintendo Wii. Um, this was one of my favorite games growing up as a kid. Because, uh, like, if you're a Bakugan fan, you probably know this game. <laughs> You probably, you probably probably had it. Cause that like, or the sequel, like it, Battle of Australia. Yeah, um, we were huge Bakugan fans. Like we preferred it more than Pokemon. I think. Still do. Still do yeah. <laughs> um, and like, and like, what the thing that what I love about this game is that you get to be part of the Battle Brawlers, and like you you actually get to join the team, and like freaking damn. Yeah, you get to yeah you get to be friends. Voice actors yeah, too, you get so to be friends with is there. you get to be friends with Dan and all that, and like he's like you know motivating you and kind of like Drago. Call you bud? Yeah, like Drago bud. talks to you and crap. And you're like, oh yes, and like the gameplay is actually fun. Like it feels like you're playing the actual like Bakugan game, like in the anime, and it's just right. like. And they got the motion controls for the add. Yeah, the version. Wii actually makes it better, I think, because like you, we also like, have to, 
I have the PS3 version too because I'm just like, ooh, it's an HD. Yeah. But like, this doesn't the, feel the same. The stick controls are just weird because we grew up with the motion and like right. this muscle memory at this point. But it, now I'm just like using a stick. I'm just like, how do you use this? Yeah, and like you can like throw the bag on like you're throwing it like when you throw the rear mode like like swing it. It's like you're throwing the actual bag of gun. Like, it's super cool. It's like. This because this is the only Bakugan thing we had because we, we had the toys but then we couldn't watch the anime it was barely on on um oh, it was Cartoon Network and we didn't have Cartoon Network right, right. we only had Boomerang yeah because I was just talking we had, we had a Cartoon Network for like just a little bit that's how we we got into it but then we got Boomerang instead then we switched I think we downgraded from Dish to Direct TV. Um, I think it was a similar package with similar channels. It was just different channels. Right. Um, Something I don't remember. So if you're a fan of Bagugan, definitely pick this game up. Like it's you so won't. It's cheap on any format. Like the Wii version is the most common. On Amazon, they randomly had a sale where it was like twelve bucks for a sealed Wii copy, and I got two. <laughs> we even played with our friends who never even, like, oh, yeah. grew up we with it. We should probably mention that we have a video on our channel about... Yeah, you know, so, like... and like a couple friends, and we get those on caffeine and play it. And, like, those guys never grew up with this video, but they were, like still having, <laughs> they were still having a lot of fun with it. Oh, my which, gosh. It got heated, bro. It got really heated. But, um, up next, to celebrate <laughs> someone's birthday, I got Sonic Forces Yay. for Xbox One. Um, This one includes the stick, like, the controller stickers. Ooh. Yeah, it's the bonus pack edition or whatever they call I'm it. never going to use those, but... No, gotta keep them preserved. Gotta keep them preserved. It's Sonic Forces fourth birthday today, and, um... Celebrate by burning a copy? Yeah, I wish. Maybe it didn't harm the stupid planet. Um, Who cares? The Sonic Forces, true. they've done enough harm. Creating it. They've done it on creating and it for the, the planet. All the electricity and like, yeah. paper used to create it was wasted. Yeah. Um, but either, I hate that this is my least favorite Sonic game. Mine it too. sucks so much. Like, uh, I'd argue Sonic Riders is less playable. But it's quicker. Oh no, this game's also quick too, I guess. But like, it has some good ideas with like the character customization and um. It's so fun to just make Blaze. Yeah, she you can be in every game, but she's not. And like, they use all the characters as wrong. Like Knuckles is some like g commander of an army, and like it's so like, like a a a Amy is like some computer whiz or whatever. And okay, it's just I saw like a post today that's related. Um. In one of in some kind of crossover comic, um, Donkey Kong repairs Omega. Oh my and god! Like, just, Omega's just like, yeah, I have to extend my gratitude towards Donkey Kong for repairing me. Oh and then god. it cuts to the scene in Sonic Forces where Tails is talking to a broken Omega. Just like, I'm sorry, I can't figure out, buddy. The yeah. Just like. Donkey Kong is a better mechanic oh my God. than freaking Tails from Sonic. Oh, that's so like, funny. What kind of universe has Sega put <laughs> Yeah, um, Sonic fan, don't pick this up. Like, it, like, it's just so lazy. Like, you can Take beat one. You can really beat one level without even, with only jumping. You don't even have to move the control stick. It's so lazy. So uh, yeah, had this. It's one of the few games where I can't even say the soundtrack's good. Like Sonic the Six has a pretty rocking soundtrack. For yeah. The most part. Um, Sonic Riders, I remember being good. It's good, yeah. Um, but, um, like Free Riders has a pretty good theme song. But yeah, that one is just like no. Up next, I have Mega Man Zero so ZX Why Legacy you keep Collection. My games? That's mine. No, this is this. Year. I bought this. Are you stupid? I bought. I swear I bought it. Fourteen ninety nine. I swear I bought it. It came with the Ori Will of the Wisps collection or collector's edition. Well, this is yours, then, so I'm sorry, but I hey, I got to talk about You're it. You anyway. played it. So. Yeah, it was. <laughs> I am the one who played it. Um, this was such like a confusing mess to me because like I know that Zero series has a lot of love in the Mega Man um, fan base, but like. God, I couldn't get into it. I mean, I played all the games on this collection, but I mean, like, something, there's something about everything that didn't feel right. It didn't feel like a, I guess it wasn't supposed to be like a Mega Man game, but I don't know. I mean, like, Z, the, the Zero Series was okay. Like, I could play that again. It, like, had stupid level design, but, um, I would play it again. But ZX was just awful just straight up awful i hated every second i played it was it's it like trying to be a metroidvania but it had no map 
and it's like what kind of metroidvania has no map metroid you, you, you just can't that's the first metroidvania though so you can't really complain was that 89 87. I, I get that and yeah. Mother 1 mixed up. Something. Well, I know, I know, yeah, Mother's for sure 89. Yeah, I always yeah, remember that sure. one, but then with Metro, I'm just like, eh. Yeah, but um, play the Zero games, don't play the ZX games. And for the last one, and I know this one for sure, mine, because I bought it myself, uh, Super Mario 3D All-Stars. Wait, is this? It's still sealed. No, this is my copy. Yours was the PAL copy. No, because I have two copies. I have a sealed version oh, wait, 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 wait. No. of this, and then I have another sealed version of the PAL copy. And oh. Yeah. Oh, right. Because right. I bought one to use and bought one to keep sealed, and so I just I. have I have both of them sealed. Right. I thought, I, for some reason, I thought I gave one to a friend. Anyway, continue. Yeah, um, Super Mario City also, it was a very controversial thing on Twitter for a while because, like, it was only available for three months, and they were just Six. like... For, yeah, for six months, and they're only like slightly higher quality ports, um, like uh, slightly higher quality ROMs. I guess you could say on the Switch. It is the best way to play these games, but like Super Mario 64 is only 720p and not even in a widescreen. Like it's still four by three for some reason. Doesn't even give you an option or anything. Um, and it, like the Sunshine and Galaxy are good. Like you know, they're 1080p widescreen, 1080 six. No, I think there's one. 1080p. I think 60, 60 by nine. I think there's 60 frames too. Uh, Sunshine is not. He's not okay. I did, I don't think they upped the frame rate of any of them. But Galaxy, or did they? I, I, yeah, I can't remember. Man, you put you hundred percent in. I did. I one hundred percent. Can't even remember. Yeah, and I can't even remember. Like, there's, it's just so forgettable. Honestly, like I played like ten minutes with my sixty four. Should have been remasters. That would have like that would have you know solidified the uh, yeah. six to sixty dollar yeah. price tag. I don't think it. I think sixty dollars is a good price for that. Yeah, good. No, it's it's not. There's a good price. Because like, the thing is. That brought the GameCube version of Mario Sunshine way down in price. Yeah. Like on, the eBay price was going for like 120 Now you can find it on eBay for like 50 Yeah. And then locally you can find it even cheaper if you have stores like that. Yeah, and they just released an update where you can use the Nintendo Switch Online N64 controller with it. And it's just like, what if you don't have the game? <laughs> you you, can't, can you can't get it. Yeah, you can get physical it. Physical copies are keeping their value. They haven't gone down... Right. Sometimes Best Buy has clearance sales on it, or like Target places like that. Wait, but eventually they're gonna run out. Eventually. Like eventually, That's why have, we each have two copies because we know one of them is yeah is like in like twenty years or something it's gonna be like hundred dollars for a steel copy. Yeah. Crap. So um, because it's a Nintendo game. Yeah. So um, they they're fun ports though. If you find it it's on clearance and you have a Switch. Get them. There are masterpieces of um, 3D platforming, especially Mario 64. Like, freaking masterpiece, honestly. So it's a good no, game. Sunshine. I know, but... Nostalgia will always win for me. It will. Anyway, you got some vinyls there. What do you yeah, got? so to finish up the music side, I am... I have way more CDs than vinyl. Um, recently, I did bolster my vinyl collection a bit with some... Five dollar pickups and some more expensive ones. Anyway, I don't have many records that I'm like super proud of or like that are really weird. Like, I have some Van Halen which I like because they're a good band, you know, things like that. Just like I have bands I like on vinyl, and to me, that's all I need. But I do have a couple limited editions, uh, two that I'm going to talk about Volbeat's debut, The Strength of Sound of the Songs absolutely I want to say perfect album um I'd say it has the best guitar riffs in any album I'm sorry Metallica I'm sorry Megadeth it's another oh Slash mm -hmm. the Guns N' Roses dude but like man I hear any of these songs and I'm just like yes it's, it's like stuff. The, ah, it's coming yeah. out. This is the one. What anniversary? 15th? Yeah, 15th anniversary. Clear with brown. I don't know what the official name for the color is. It's like clear with brown splotches or whatever the heck. Mm. Um, 
That the next one's really cool. I'm jealous of that one actually. This one is even more rare. Uh, you can still buy it though, I think. Uh, this is the Volbeat's newest album. Uh, as of this recording, they haven't released. Um, I'm blanking on the one they're making right now. But this is Rewind, Replay, Rebound, The Servant of the Mind. They're releasing singles for that. Hmm. Um, uh, th uh, so, re Rewind, Replay, Rebound isn't what got me into Volbeat, but there's a weird phase where, like, in, like, late middle school, early high school, I was jumping from streaming service to streaming service, like, because they keep giving me free trials. Like, Spotify would be like, here's three months for a dollar. I'm like, okay. And then Tidal's just like, here's three months for free. I'm like, okay. And then, yeah. like, Amazon Music's like, here's three months for free. I'm just like, okay. So I discovered Volbeat, like, the first album on Amazon Music. And then I added those to, like, at the time I used to just put songs into a playlist that I liked. But for some reason, when I switched, like, that same month, I forgot to put them back into my library of Spotify mm -hmm. or whatever I switched back to. And then suddenly we're at Target one day with a friend and he's just like, he picks up Rewind, We Play Rebound. He's like, hey, this was like my summer jam. And I'm just like, Volby, they sound familiar. So I impulse bought it. I'm just like, oh yeah, these guys. Yeah. Um, this album is quite amazing in what it achieves. I like the first one better, but this one... It's weird, because I feel nostalgic towards a time I never lived through. Right. Because he wanted... He was just thinking of childhood a lot when writing this. Mm -hmm. I don't know how old he is, but I'm assuming 70s, yeah. 80s. And um, Cheapside Sloggers, especially. And uh, When We Were Kids, obviously. Yeah. Um, both kind of just make me feel like I was around during that time. Like It just makes me feel nostalgic towards childhood yeah. in general. Um, this one... The reason I want to bring it up, I can gush about the album all day, is because this is number 662 out of 1,000. This is, I believe, the silver? I don't want to take it out. That's yeah. complicated. Um, and this one, and this next one, I'm super jealous for. I this, wish I okay, had it. So my uncle, uh, you know, used to, he was, he is a metalhead, but he used to buy a bunch of records back in the day, 70s, 80s, a little bit in the 90s maybe. So did my dad. Uh, they were the two big music junkies in their family. Um, they left... My dad left all of his records in my grandparents' basement, and that uncle took what he wanted and left a bunch in there, too. So um, that's kind of how I got into a few bands, just looking through both of their collections down there, um, seeing bands that I was like, I recognize this name, or like, I've heard these are good these guys and Metallica I heard was good because everyone's just like oh Metallica yay and I knew Enter Sandman and nothing else yeah like most people um and I was swiping through the records and I found Master of Puppets I'm just like this is a cool cover I'll take a listen brought it home a week a couple weeks ago by and I got time to listen to it I remember the first time I listened to it I'm like this is pretty good my god! And then the next time I listen to it, I'm like, what the heck is this? Yeah. This is awesome. It's a freaking masterpiece. I remember um, you to pop the cassette in our grandparents' basement. And like our grandparents' is like, set, like it was built in like the 70s or like 80s. Oh, man, it's cool. So like he's got like wood panels, got like a bar and like it's so dusty and like gloomy looking in there. And so like it, it literally just a basement from the 70s. So like he pops it in and like listening to Metallica on a cassette in like a 70s 80s themed basement it it got me and like the first time the place is battery and so it's like dun, 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 dun. It's hearing that in like that setting just like my mind was like open i was like i finally found it i found my favorite music genre just by just just, just there right there is when i found my, found my favorite music genre and so master of puppets will always be um, but a very special yeah. album in the my heart. Is, I like um, Ride the Lightning better. Ride the Lightning is my favorite album of all time. But this one is... Yeah. It, I, I'd say this one's nostalgic. I know the songs better, even though I've probably listened to Ride the Lightning more. Because I listened to these at a younger age, and I kind of grew with them. Mm -hmm. um, and that's when I had the playlist. Uh, for context, I used to put songs into a playlist called My Favorites Playlist, and I would just shuffle that. 
throughout my life, like school, car, whatever. But this, the reason I mention this is because this is not a remaster. Right, it's this the original. One of the first, one of the, the heck year was this? I always forget. Uh, 86, one of the 86 pressings, I'm pretty sure. I don't remember the exact one. I could look it up, but then you hear your mouse clicks, and that's... Yeah, that's insane. stupid. The only thing is, this doesn't have the sleeve. I need to buy... But, like, just a pack of, like, 20 sleeves. Like, 20 bucks is, like, a dollar per sleeve. Or, yeah, the inner sleeve, I should say. I still have the artwork, thankfully. Right. This is the most valuable thing in my collection of music, movies, and games. I want to buy it off of you. This thing, um, highest goes for, like, 300 for, like, steel. Even the lowest... It's sold for on Discogs, the music site I look at. It's like 90? Yeah. <laughs> it's like the uh, lowest. That's probably for like a super scratch one. But I found... This it. one scratches or skips a little bit on the last song, Damage Inc. Other than that, it's like clean. I, um, we, we, were, in, we were in a record store, like local record store, and like <laughs> oh, yeah. they had it, one of the original pressings, in those two. Yeah. UK pressing, I believe. Right, it was UK pressing, but it was a hundred dollars, and I still wanted it so bad. It was just like tempting, just like. But uh, if you don't have a hundred dollars to drop on exactly. four um, Metallica records each, uh, the Blackened 2021 remasters, not the old like mid tens, I guess now. Apparently, those are good. I audio files like those, so. One last thing is I managed to secure the Metro Dread Amiibo collection set. Um, right now, you can't really find these because of scalpers, so I thought I'd mention it. Anyway, this will can show off there. Okay. Finish off your pile. Um, so I have the Kirby's Dream Collection Special Edition for Kirby's 25th anniversary for Nintendo Wii. And um, you see, this thing I mentioned because not only is it a rare item in my collection, it's like going for like a, you know, like seventy, eighty dollars now. Uh, I bought it brand new for eighty dollars, and like it was the only one there, and just like I'll get a brand new Wii game. I want because I want, I want to like feel kind of nostalgic, you know, opening up a brand new Wii game. Um, and I even recorded that. Um, it's somewhere on YouTube if you look hard enough. I don't think. It is? I swear it is, or you uploaded it, but I, I don't know. Didn't want me to. I don't know. Um, it's somewhere maybe. You see, and I was really excited because like I wanted to play the original Kirby games. I wanted to do that for so long, and like these are like you know preserved and like, you know they're like upscaled like um like 40p or whatever. But like it's it like I still wanted to play them like the most authentic way possible. And like this is like the next closest thing because it also had um a soundtrack that soundtrack to all the games like a art book and like um levels like exclusive levels from um Return of the Dreamland, which is my favorite Kirby game. And I didn't enjoy it. <laughs> you you know you watched me play. I did okay. I Kirby the first game was fine because it was only like an hour long. You know doesn't hurt. Uh, Kirby's Adventure was like okay, like it wasn't bad, wasn't good. Dreamland Two sucks. I hated that. I didn't even finish it. It was so bad. Um, Superstar just play Superstar Ultra, then the DS and Dreamland Three play for the art style, nothing else. Crystal Shard and Gooey, and Gooey too. I'm playing for Gooey, and uh, 64. You don't, need to play, you don't even need to play that. Like, it has one interesting gimmick, and that's it. I watched you play the whole game, and I remember nothing of it. But, like, it has, like, a cool thing about Kirby's history, because it was, like, it tells you, like, which what games were released where, but it also tells you about other world history. Like, this is when the Olympics happened, and this is where, like, they, this invention was invented. This is where Barack Obama became president, you know? Like, interesting stuff like that. And they, I think they also have, like... Um, a few episodes of the cartoon series, which I cannot find anywhere. I really want to watch it, but I can't find it anywhere. So, um, yeah, this is a bit more on the rarer side than the weirder side. Uh, so I, I just had to mention that. Um, I have... Why the heck did I pick this up? I have CSI. You are enamored. Crime scene investigation. Hard evidence. Our grandpa gave us his um, 360 and all of his game with it. And this was one of them. I've just been so, like, curious about this game. I'm not sure Only why. the cover. If you just look at the cover, you'd know. You just know, like, how just, like, weird this is. And, like, the back of the cover, just has this dead dude on the back. Like, he's just laying there, just like, eh. 
But um, oh yeah, these three models are absolutely off. When the case is in such bad shape, like well, I don't know why. I, that's not the original. We swapped. It, it, was, it had a decent case that we swapped. It's just so yeah. Sonic Unleashed's original case actually. I just swapped it out with that. So I remember that. Um, I have um another weird item. This is more on the weirder side. Uh, I have a DKC or Donkey Kong Country um like VHS preview. This is before Donkey Kong Country um uh, released, and so they made a VHS promoting it to all like Nintendo Power um subscri like subscribers, I think. And it, it's really interesting because it's like, it's a it's a time capsule from the nineties. You have this like super nineties dude going to like Nintendo headquarters. You're like, yo guy, we're going into the headquarters, and they have all these filters and weird camera angles, and you can't see what's going on because they have like inverted colors and all this garbage filters. And you're like, we're gonna go with Nintendo. We're gonna check out this new awesome game and Donkey Kong. And they go in, and like every everyone's just like. Everyone, I feel so bad for the developers because like they had to act all cool and stuff when they really just didn't want to because they're all like 40 year old developers that just want to get their job done and you had this like this guy and these cameras are all coming and like yo what's going on how are you how are you making this game bro and it, it, it's a like time castle definitely um don't watch it if you have like absolutely or whatever because like yeah because like there's lots of flashing 90s stuff so interesting time capsule from you know history of donkey kong and all that kind of interesting when they actually tell you how it was made and you know, when the guy isn't shoving a bunch of you know stupid 90s stuff in your face so it's like ten dollars so like if you find a good copy of it um pick it up or like watch on youtube they'll preserve on youtube um one of the last things i have is a razor freestyle scooter for the dreamcast i was gonna make like an actual like in-depth review of this game um like in like a few years ago i just never got around to it. like i got good good far into it i just stopped because i don't know i just you wasn't can, motivated enough did you record, ever record gameplay i know you filmed some i record all the gameplay and i they got done 50 percent of the video i'm pretty sure i recorded then, three gameplay sessions that were intended to be my first youtube video <laughs> and like yeah then i just stopped it because this wasn't motivated but um this was a weird game because it was a tony hawk clone but with Razor Scooters and 10 year olds. Like if you just look at the cover, you can just know what this game is. I mean, it, it's a super bad like Tony Hawk rip off and this, like, all the tricks are so hard to maneuver and like it's so frustratingly hard and I would 100% end it. <laughs> um, oh yeah, yeah, I would 100% end it. That and sucks. my reward I, I just don't even want this to look up Razor Freestyle Scooter um credit scene oh, yeah, the and the plot is whack. It's a whack plot. You, like you just got this robot kidnapping kids and you have to free them by doing scooter tricks. As you do. You know normal. <laughs> um and then the last thing I have, he, you got a lot of stuff, holy crud. <laughs> Like, I didn't expect you to get that much, but, um, last item is last, but absolutely not least. In fact, it's the highest, um, of the rarity. This is the most rarest item I have. It is the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time Collector's Edition complete in box. Um, it has, like, the gold cartridges and the manual and everything. I got this for, like, a $100. Now it's like two hundred fifty to three hundred dollars. I'm thank like, you, oh quarantine. my god! Thank you, quarantine, for ruining every collector's lives. Um, and in like, cause I, this is so special to me, cause this is my favorite game of all time, like hands down. Like I prefer the 3DS version, of course, but like this is owning like a actual like relic from like the 90s, just like in the best version the collector's edition and like the gold cartridge like not everyone has this because no one wants to spend two hundred dollars on a n64 game Is um majora's mask even more it's on the same price uh -oh. um I, I guess more people would have bought that at the time yeah they know they like the original That's yeah the thing with collector's editions a lot of 
fir that was like the first 3D game, so people were just like, why would I buy the collector's edition? I don't know if I like it. Yeah, so but it, like, like... It annoys me when they do that. They make, like, Halo, the first game does not have a collector's edition, but every other game except ODST does. Yeah. Makes sense. But Assassin's Creed is just like, let's have a collector's edition for the very first game. Right, and it's just like, why would you do that? Well, now I can't collect that because it's like a billion dollars so no one bought it. Right. Um, but like, this is just so special. This is like the most, my most prized possession I have. Um, like, I'm going to get, I'm going to get like a protective like plastic casing around. I'm going to do whatever I can to preserve it. Like, it has a few like indents and bumps here and there. It's like, cardboard. yeah, it's carbon. So I probably bought it like that, to be honest. Yeah. So like, um, you see the story with this is funny. Cause like, um, we were in Don, uh, uh, like our local game store and some dude just sold all of his N64, like rare N64 complete in box games. And this was like one of them. This was the most expensive game they had. And I saw him like, oh my gosh, I need that. But I didn't have the money at the time. A day later, I get paid. And but we had to do like, um, we had to go to um, like the student, the, the teacher and parent conference the yeah the conferences and so i was just like mom we have to go after this to get you know a game i want she's like okay but the conferences took forever i'm like oh my gosh is it gonna be here is it gonna be here is it gonna be here is it gonna be there like i was so nervous and so when i go i grew around to it and it was still there and so i just like shell out all my money and just slap it down it's like give me that logging of time and so i got and i was just like so relieved like it was such a good moment in my collecting life um logging of time though like if you want one of the one of the highest rated uh, i think it is the highest rated metacritic game i want the highest rated metacritic game um play acrony of time yeah it's pretty good and it's on nintendo switch online right now. it is and if you want broken it is kind of broken but if you want the you know if you have a 3ds get the 3ds version it is it does the superior version but yeah best the best thing at my it's the best thing i have in my collection my favorite thing i have in my collection and the rarest thing in my collection so it's kind of the it's it's the crown jewel of my collection i'm very very proud to own it all right so now on to my video games this is a short stack but so first this one's rare ish castlevania curse of darkness um everyone bought the xbox version for some reason Maybe because it was the first Castlevania game on Xbox. But this is part of their bad 3D era. Um, the thing is, the PS2 version... So the Xbox version is like 35 on average. The PS2 version is more like somewhere between 80 and 100, depending on the condition and everything. This one I got, I want to bid, got it for 30. So less than the Xbox version. No manual, but it doesn't matter... Um, I'm probably not going to like this game anyway. <laughs> uh, I have not played any of the 3D Castlevanias. I keep meaning to play Lament of Innocence. Um, but, like, it just kept evading me. Like, our PS2 had problems for a long time. And now that it's not, I've built up a an even larger backlog anyway. So that one, I was very proud of. Like, I had a rush of adrenaline when I won that auction. And especially since I don't bid too often on eBay. Next is just something really weird. I found out there's a Heathcliff game on Wii called Heathcliff the Fast and the Furriest. And for those who don't know, Heathcliff is another orange cat in the comic book that isn't Garfield. Um, he's superior in every way. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't even played this. But on the front, it says compatible with Wii. Oh my god, I didn't even know sold that. separately. Oh, that's even great. Even every game is compatible with a Wii Wheel because it's just a plastic attachment. There's no, like, electronics in it. But um, I just thought this this is a, a brand new Wii. I brought a brand new on eBay for, like, $8. <laughs> pretty good, pretty good steal. And we're, we're going to play that Man at High, so don't worry. Oh, yeah, we will eventually once we get back to we get back to actually doing it yes i have there's been so many times where i've almost edited the next video and then something would come yep. up anyway next is f-zero x japanese not the like hundred dollar american version but it's complete in box uh, the box art is epic the manual is epic 
The game is epic. Yep. This is the best N64 game that I've ever played. Um, it says no resale. Uh oh. Uh, for sale and use in Japan only. Oops. Oh, you did illegal. Selling second hand is not allowed. Oh my god. <laughs> what? Uh, that's so How do weird. You regulate the anyway. <laughs> um, all we did was take off the back and put on an American back so it fit in our console. But uh, it works. It's in Japanese. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. What else to say other than that? This is the only other complete unboxed in 64 game we have yep. besides Ocarina. I do want all the F Zero games complete. What, Japanese, just to keep with the um, theme. Next is this one is just I don't know why this exists. Who thought it was a good idea to make a collector's edition for Lego Harry Potter years one through four? I don't know, but they made it. <laughs> I I have it. <laughs> you do it have it. Magnets. Like yeah, like little Lego magnets I and stuff with the house crests and all that. No, uh, you uh, got it for like what, like six dollars? <laughs> the I'm pretty sure it was a lady selling it on eBay. Um, she was just like selling for twelve, and I was I put an offer for like seven, and she accepted. <laughs> I'm just like, whoa, there we go. Got the collector's edition. Yay. I'm playing 100%ing it with my sister recently. Pretty fun. Next is um, something very special to me. Sonic Adventure 2 birthday pack. Um, this was released, only sold for two days and only in Japan. Um... It's just Sonic Adventure 2 on the Dreamcast. Uh, like, that's the normal version, but this one includes a little fold-out thing that comes with a collectible coin and a CD which compiles some songs from his Sonic's history, because this is the 10th anniversary game. Um, I think it's still their best anniversary game. Yep, it is. And... I got this for only like 40 bucks on eBay and now it's going for like 80 which is still cheap for something that's only sold for two days and only in Japan but Dreamcast it's very easy to run foreign games on that thing mm -hmm. um, if you have a certain model and then last and definitely not least probably the most prized thing in my collection is Balan Wonderworld for the PS5 yay Balan Wonderworld <laughs> and by that I mean I hate that cool well that was, <laughs> that was our that not was as funny as i thought it would be i don't know i really have to go to the bathroom right now so i gotta um, wrap this up and plus we're already over a limit an hour long so this one went on way longer than I it did one, yeah so. we got a lot of stuff and like we probably miss a lot of stuff too so i want to in the future um you know when we get a lot more rare and um, obscure stuff we're gonna you know yeah, have a camera visit this and eventually we'll be filming this podcast and putting it up live yeah on youtube for a video version because i prefer to watch video podcasts and because audio is boring audio is boring i mean it's nice though yeah nice you can have the video on and then just kind of have it in the background if you need to do something right and then if something happens you can glance and see what they're talking about yeah but, but um hey this is fun eventually it was fun. this was fun nice to be recording again doing after so things long, yeah. for the channel um I, I i don't know all i gotta say is i will release the last three episodes of that drake of the 99 dragons recording it's someday. coming out boys so it will happen it's just no we... matter what i try i just get busy and people want me to do things and i've got to work and i've got to go to school no way you you school sucks yeah. you're 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 organized that anyway um so yeah get that subscribe Hit that big fast subscribe button. Subscribe on uh, Man, not... OnlyFans. <laughs> yes, we have an OnlyFans. Only <laughs> 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 uh, 
anyway so yeah thanks for watching stay cool listening. out there thanks for listening yeah thanks for listening stay cool out there guys and don't die don't die that is true <laughs> do not die bad. that would be really bad <laughs>